they are the faces and the names Jennifer. you're used to seeing on Oscar night. Along with all the craziness. How are you guys? Salut, Calais. It's Oscars Day. <laughs> In every way imaginable, producer Ariel Nazar traveled a great distance to get to Hollywood. He and director Sam French were in town because their short action film, The Buzkashi Boys, received an Oscar nomination. We took on something that um, was incredibly risky, you know? We took a risk, we took a chance, and that's what being a filmmaker is about. We took a big risk, and it paid off in a big way. We have a beautiful film. A big risk. Wuskashi Boys was filmed in the heart of a war zone in Afghanistan. A coming of age story about two boys who dream of fame in Afghan's national sport. Wuskashi is kind of like a rustic game of soccer where competitors battle over a goat carcass. Okay. 17 part Delta take six. But before Nasser could shoot his film, he needed actors. I'm be with you guys. <laughs> That's when he found young Fawad Mohammadi. And he had these like bright green eyes, brilliant smile, he spoke fluent English. The kid is incredible. A boy from the streets of Kabul who earned what money he could by selling maps. Rafi! The other lead role in the movie went to Juan Amar Pais. He comes from a middle-class family and is a well-known child actor in Afghanistan. But his hubris floored Nasser the first time they met. He said, um, one day I want to win an Oscar. And we were like, oh, that's great. Wow, what a dream. Amazing, you know. And then later on, we're like, wow, that kid's really ambitious. Amazing when you think Pais and Mohammadi had the honor of starring in the first Afghan film to be nominated for an Academy Award. Oh, yeah, I know. Two years have changed the boys. They're now 14, and hopeless Kashi boys can change widespread beliefs about their war ravaged nation. Uh, I want them to see real face of Afghanistan, and my message for them uh, is that uh, that uh, they should see the real face of Afghanistan and uh, don't see like a war country. What do you want people to take away looking at your unvarnished film of Afghanistan that shows the pride that people have? Well, for me, it's really about building bridges. Um, all of my work in Afghanistan is about uh, building a bridge between Afghanistan and the rest of the world. I mean, that's why I went there. Nazar and director Sam French lived in Afghanistan years before taking on this project. They had ambition, talent, and a compelling story, but they lacked the funding. Then in 2010, they received money, a grant from the U.S. State Department in the low six figures. Start here, when I say action, go, okay? It was part of some $100 million plus the U.S. invested in Afghanistan communications to combat extremist views, build capacity in Afghanistan, and create TV programming and film. Cool, cut. Yeah, perfect, Kubas. Same, 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 same. <laughs> Critics question whether much of the money was used properly and actually benefited the country. This one, I remember when we went there. <laughs> this was Gary Pergel is a former U.S. Foreign Service officer and worked at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul as Director of Strategic Communications. Well, I think we were in many ways financing hope. That was one of the main things that the U.S. government was doing at that time, and especially with our media and communications. Uh, we were bringing people together. We were letting them see that actually there might be a great future in Afghanistan if we can just get people to uh, start being a little more moderate in their views. 
In 2011, I was working for the U.S. State Department in Kabul. One of my jobs was overseeing the Buzkashi Boys Grant, making sure the money was accounted for and spent properly. Here are the two actresses. Uh, see, the, oh there's another one God. that we supported. Pergel was my boss at the embassy. <laughs> Early in production of Buzkashi Boys, Pergel and I went to watch the crew work during filming at a devastated landmark in Afghanistan called Darlaman Palace. I think that was one of my best days in Afghanistan. And I still have those photos of the snow falling in that burned out palace um, and those little kids uh, working on the film and watching these guys uh, as they were working their craft. It was fabulous. It was a great time. Exactly. What is it like for you to be here on the red carpet? Uh, I'm also so happy and so excited. I cannot say my feeling. Fawad and Joanna Mard embraced a dream come true when they were able to come to the United States for the big night. We weren't uh, tired when we came from Afghanistan to America, but now we are tired, a little bit tired, and very excited. And uh, we are happy to come here. The best and at the end of the day, they uh, proved yeah, kids yeah, are yes. kids. <laughs> uh, the food I like, but I can say that uh, it's a little bit different for us. It's uh, strange. Uh, we miss our food, uh, Afghan food, but uh, uh, I like French fries here and hamburgers are so good. <laughs> Making a mark in Hollywood is the kind of thing actors and filmmakers dream of, a shot at the Oscars. But being in the spotlight in Afghanistan isn't always good, especially if you have a direct connection to the United States. The young Afghan stars know when they return home, their newfound fame could make them a target to insurgents. Tragedy struck Joanna Mart's family six months ago. His older brother was murdered. The family blames insurgents, and the Taliban has reportedly threatened the family further, and that has dramatically changed the young boy's life. Uh, this is very uh, difficult uh, for me. Uh, every every mm, uh, place that I uh, will I go. Uh, somebody, uh, m uh, my family, uh, come with me. Okay. What's happening? Go there. Nasser, a documentary maker, talked at length with the boys' families before filming. These kids, you know, they're comfortable with being in the film, and they want the film to be seen. And for me, that's that's important. That that does count for something. I'd like to give this story the magical ending it deserves. But Oscar did not smile on the Buskashi boys. Still, no one can ever take away their nomination. Something like this, it brings so much dignity and so much pride to the country. I think that for the large part of Kabul, these kids will be heroes. What's it like basically almost being a national hero right now? I mean, really, what's it like? <laughs> we are very happy, but I, I don't think that we are a national heroes. That <laughs> But I think uh, that we are superstars. <laughs> <laughs>